All right, so what was that? Oh no. Okay, so right here we have a neuron. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see the dendrites up here, the cell body. We have the axon with the Schwann cells covering it um, and our synaptic knobs over here. And what we're zooming in on is the axon itself. So here's the axon labeled, like Crystal was saying, the myelin, which makes up the Schwann cells. And then what are these gaps called again? Nodes of Ranvier. Yeah, it's like French. I mean, say Ranvier if it helps you with the spelling, but the nodes of Ranvier. So we're going to start um, with labeling the nodes. How many nodes of Ranvier do we have here? Two. Two, yeah. So we're going to label the first one node one, and the second one node two. Okay, so, so far we've zoomed in on the axon and the Schwann cells, and now we're going to zoom in even more. Like you guys saw, we had those cations moving in and out of the axon, um, and so we're going to zoom in on the cell membrane of an axon. So um, we're gonna zoom in right here on node one. I'm gonna make a circle. I wanna include one of those plus signs and one of those minus signs. So we're going to be looking at this cell membrane. You can see a cell membrane here and a cell membrane here, cell membrane here and here. We're going to be looking at the cell membrane right here zoomed in. So here's the membrane and here's the outside of the cell right here and the inside of the cell right here. Okay, so I'm going to do some like lines to show this is zooming in on the cell membrane. Anybody know, like, we haven't talked about specific names, but what these are that sit in a cell membrane from biology? Yeah. Oh, no, I They're not mitochondria, good guess. In the electron transport chain, you have all these little proteins. So they're proteins, which are just channels. So they open and close, allowing things through the membrane. Um, either in or out. So we're going to be looking at three different proteins in here or three different channels as we talk about these ions moving in and out. Um, so what I want you to do next is just kind of draw a little line here and we're going to just label what we zoomed in on um, which is a cell membrane of a neuron. And like we just talked about, inside that cell membrane are these channels. And so they contain channels or pumps to allow what to move in and out. What do we see in that video again? To allow those cations to move in and out. Good. So these are like the entranceways. Um, if you think of like channels, you can think of like ships and how channels allow ships to tr travel through an area. This is where movement can occur. Otherwise, it's kind of blocked by that cell membrane, but these channels will let those ions through. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna look at our first picture down here of the cell membrane. And this is what a neuron looks like when it's at rest, meaning it's not being used. So um, it's not sending any signals. Um, so we call this step resting potential. And we're just going to go through these three different channels and talk about what each of their roles are um, and color code them. So right now they're all closed. But if they were open, this one on the far left, we're going to um, just like highlight or outline in red. This one would transport sodium ions or allow sodium ions through if it were open, but right now it's closed. So if you look down below at the next picture, that's what an open channel would look like. Right now it's closed, but if it were open, sodium is what it would allow through. So sodium's a cation, you could say like Na plus from chemistry. Um, and so these little white dots, you see the white and the gray ones, we wanna label the white ones in red or highlight the circle, what is it called? Outline them in red and put little plus signs in them so we remember they're positively charged, that they are cations. So there's six on this side over here. 
<clears throat> and right now, I just colored six ions of sodium red on what side of the cell? Are we inside the axon right now or outside? Outside. outside, yeah. So if you look back up at this picture, we would be on the outside right now. So I'm going to label that plus and then outside. And I'll talk about why I labeled the plus in just a second. But that's the outside of the cell. And then over to the left in the column, I'm going to just write that my red is Na plus, which is a sodium ion. If you don't know what Na plus means, you don't remember, write underneath that sodium ion um, so that you can remember what that stands for. Okay. So that's our first channel. It's only job is to open to allow those through. Then our next channel we're going to use blue for, and this one is going to be the channel that allows potassium through. So potassium, anyone know what like you, what's the symbol for potassium? K? K plus, yeah, potassium ion, I guess I should say, it's K plus. So again, we're working with cations, positive charges, and we're just going to see these positive charges moving around. Um, so I only have one potassium outside, which I'm going to label with a plus in circle and blue. And I have three potassiums inside the cell. And so if you look on both sides right now of this cell, we have positive charges. There's really no negative charge. But in comparison, is the inside or the outside more negative? Inside, yeah. Another way of saying more negative is saying it's less positive. So if there's more pluses over here than in here, this side is positively charged in relation to the inside. So I'm going to write a negative sign over here and write in. That's inside of the cell, and right now it's negatively charged in comparison to the outside where there's more of a positive charge. And so at rest, a neuron has a negative charge. When it's sending a signal, it will have a positive charge inside, and that's what allows the action potential or that signal to be um, moving through the axon. So over here in the column, I'm going to make a plus sign and label that K plus. Again, if you wouldn't know that when you looked back at your notes, that's potassium. Um, just label that as a potassium ion. So these ions, like if you ever think about when you're working out, you want to have electrolytes, um, eating bananas, like these two ions that you get through your food are so critically important. Um, oh, actually, I have a kind of interesting story. So I overheard this conversation the other day, and there was this person who's on a sports team, and they were traveling, and they were... They were traveling to visit their family. This isn't really relevant or important to the story. Anyways, um, so they're visiting their family and all of a sudden they wake up one morning and their arms and legs are completely paralyzed. Like normal when they went to bed, completely paralyzed when they woke up. So like freaking out, they go to the emergency room and it's because they were low on potassium and sodium. So then their nervous system just like shut down and they got paralyzed. Now they were able to fix it, but like super scary because what I was told was that person only eats like junk food all the time, like nothing healthy for them. And so they didn't have enough of these to get their neurons moving. So that's how like important these are for your body because they're used all the time sending signals through your body. Anyways, that was a little bit of a side note. And the last um, channel here is our sodium potassium pump. Anyone remember that from biology? So these are just channels, the sodium channel, the potassium channel. This is a pump. If it's a pump, what differentiates it from a channel is it needs energy to work. Like it's using some energy. So this little guy here is ATP energy that's going to help pump these ions um, in a certain direction. Usually ions are just going to move. If like if this channel opens, the red ions would flow in because they want to move from where there's more to where there's less diffusion. I don't know if you remember that. And if this blue channel open, these guys would move out because they're just moving where there's more to where there's less. But when you pump, you're going to kind of go against that. So you're going to like direct them in a certain way. Whereas a channel can't really direct them. It's just whatever they want to do. So this is our sodium potassium pump. And in the corner, I'm going to label that NaK 
K-pump. And you can see those arrows going through it. Um, what it does is it's going to pump the sodium out. So I'm gonna draw this arrow that goes out of the pump red, and it will pump potassium ions into the cell. And again, it's not doing it right now in this picture, but that's what, actually it is doing it right now. It is, at rest, it's pumping those in and out. It's trying to create this difference in the membrane. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have the idea of what's in this picture that we see over and over and over again, um, we're going to talk about what's going on in this resting potential phase. So um, over to the right, underneath resting potential, uh, we're going to make a little bullet point that says neurons are usually, what charge inside are they usually at rest? Negative. negative. They are usually negative. Or usually, I should say, usually more negative. So it's all about relationship to the outside. Um, so neurons are usually more negative inside. And there's actually a certain number we can assign this in terms of millivolts. So it's a way of measuring this like change in charge. Um, so we can see these changes in charges as we measure membrane potential in millivolts. So up here, if you look at this graph, step one is labeled right here. At rest, what is the membrane potential? What is the ability of, or the capability of the neuron to change its charge at this point? What number do you see where the line is labeled one? Yeah, negative 70 millivolts. So that's the membrane potential at this point. And again, the membrane potential is like the capability of the neuron to change its charge. This will make more sense as we move on from here. But normally, this charge inside that's negative is negative 70 millivolts. So it's just kind of giving a number to this negative, negative charge inside the cell as compared to outside. So that's what's going on until a stimuli comes along and we end up with a change in, um, or we end up with some kind of stimulus that starts this reaction or this signal to be, or starts sending this signal. So um, someone comes up to you and scares you, or you have a spider that drops onto your arm, or you are passing papers to the person behind you and you pick up a paper. Any stimulus that means you're responding to something, um, the teacher, the fire alarm goes off and you go outside. Any stimulus occurs and we're going to end up moving on to the next phase, but only if threshold is reached. Um, if you look up here on this graph, it shows you that threshold is what? negative 55. So you need a stimulus that's strong enough to change the charges to negative 55 in and make the outside uh, more positive. So not everything will send a signal. For example, um, anyone ever had that happen when you're passing papers back to the person behind you and you're like tapping them with the papers but they don't notice you're doing that? Like, you don't, they don't feel you, and you're like literally touching them, but they have no idea you're tapping them with the paper. That's because they're not reaching threshold, or you're like they need a harder tap to reach threshold. Um, and everyone has like different thresholds. This is the general, like, average, but some people get cold easily. That's because their threshold for cold is lower than other people. And so it all has to do with the threshold. Can they feel it or can they not? Depends on if their neurons are meeting threshold. So, um, in this phase, what do you notice is different with these channels than in the first phase? Which channels open? Yeah, this first one 
the sodium channel is open. So we're only going to color the sodium channel to highlight this is where the action's taking place in this picture. And we're only going to look at these sodium ions because that's the only thing right now that's moving. If you look at this sodium potassium pump, I know it looks like it's tipped, but it's actually closed right now. So it's not doing anything. So all that's happening right now is this channel opens and like you just want to think ions like to get away from each other. So if there's more over here, they're all going to just naturally shoot on through to get away from each other because um, there was so many on that side to start. <clears throat> so the sodium rushes in to the cell and now where is it more positive? Inside. So now we're going to label inside with a positive and outside with a negative. So whenever you make something more positive, that's called depolarization. So we call this step depolarization because we're making the neuron more positive. Um, so I'll make a little note over here. First of all, depolarization cannot happen unless a stimulus uh, is present. So we're going to write in parentheses caused by a stimulus. And the stimulus causes the Na channel or the sodium channel to open. So we have sodium ions rush into the neuron. And again, this only happens if threshold is reached. Then the action potential can be sent. So if threshold is reached, then the action potential can be sent. So the action potential is the same idea as saying the signal is being sent. The action potential is the ability of a neuron to send a signal. So when you saw that video with the flashes, the flashes would be moving where this step is happening. This is the actual sending of the signal right here. Um, and let's see, once threshold, oh yeah, okay. And the other thing to note is that once one node meets threshold, the next node's sodium ions, sodium channels also open. Okay, so once one node meets threshold, the next node's sodium channel also open. So once you write that, I'll go back up and explain what that means. <clears throat> what is threshold again? What number? Negative. Negative 55, yeah. So it's becoming more positive because those ions are moving in and so it's becoming more positive or less negative. It's a weird thing to think about, but because we added positives to negative 70, it went up to negative 55. A little bit less negative, closer to zero. <clears throat> so if you look up here, the threshold is met here at node one. So the sodium ions fly in. Once the threshold is met here, they open at node two right away. And then at node three, and it's like a domino effect. And that's where that flash keeps moving. Every time a sodium channel opens, the signal moves, moves, moves to the next node. So as the nodes open, um, or as the nodes meet threshold, the sodium ions open, sodium channels open, and we have the signal being sent, like a domino effect. Sodium channels open, sent, 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 sent. So if you look up at the graph, I think we still need this. If you look up at the graph and you can look at where it shows the number two, you can watch this line, it meets threshold, and then it just keeps shooting up. It gets very, very, very positive inside the cell. Um, it goes almost all the way up to positive 30. 
So I'm gonna go back up here and just trace this line in the graph in red for step two, because that's as a result of those sodium channels opening. Becomes very much so positive. It reaches threshold and goes all the way up to plus 30 inside the neuron. Now that's great, we sent the signal and that node is now done with its job. In order to send another signal later on, what is it going to need to do? Just like a muscle, if it wants to contract later on, what does it need to do beforehand? Recover, it needs to go back to rest. It needs to reset and get itself back to normal. And so that's what our repolarization is going to do. Depolarization means you're going to make something more positive. Repolarization means you're gonna make it more negative. So if you look at the graph, we just went up, now we're gonna go right back down. So how we're going to do that, and repolarization is using our potassium ion. So if you look in step three, we have now our sodium, ion, our sodium channels closed, our sodium potassium pump closed, and what's open is our potassium channel. <clears throat> and so what's going to happen is our potassium, because if you look back here, there's lots of potassium in the cell. It wants to spread out, move away. And so it's going to shoot on through and head out of our neuron. Now, where is it more positive? outside. So it's more positive outside now. And in comparison, it's more negative inside. So we're closer, we're almost back to normal because that was the goal, to get it back to more negative inside and more positive outside. That's how we started. But we're not quite there and we'll take a look at why. Um, but first, let's summarize this step. In this step, the NA channels close. And what channel opened? Potassium. Yeah, and the K channels or potassium channels open. And the last thing we're going to write here is that the, the potassium will leave the cell. So the inside is negative again. And usually when it's doing this, the cells end up with too much potassium leaving the cell. Not too much as in a bad thing, but it will kind of become more negative than it started by a little bit until it evens out with that sodium potassium pump again. So um, if you look at the graph, you can see it kind of, it goes below negative 70 where it started. It dips down a little bit extra, um, but then it evens out again later. So I'm gonna go back up to the top and just highlight that step three in blue, showing we just got it to become more negative um, in our step of repolarization. So take a second once you're done. Um, I want you to talk to the person across from you just like real fast and tell them what's different and what's similar between step one and step three. So here's step one looking at the image only, and step three, what's similar and what's different? between steps one and three? What's similar with a hand? One and three? Yeah, one and three. Yeah, Tani? They both positive on the outside. Yeah, they're both more positive on the outside of the cell. Yeah, outside of the cell membrane, and they're both more negative inside. 
So that's good. What's different about steps one and three? Anyone catch that? Yeah, Kylie? Everything's going like through the pump, but in step three, it's going through the kitchen. Okay, good. There are different channels that are open. What else do you notice, Tahani? Yeah, you're closer. So not necessarily the movement that I'm looking for, but what is there more out of in step one? Yeah, there's more. Well, in step one, there's more sodium ions outside. And in step three, there's more potassium outside. So if we were to try and get this neuron to send another signal, our next step from here is to, with the sodium to move into the cell. Is there that much sodium to move into the cell right now? No, so we got to get it back to normal. And so what's going to direct our ions is what channel? The NAK pump. So the pump's got to get these on the right side. Because yes, we have the right charges, but if we want to be able to move on to step two when another signal comes, we have to make sure that there's more sodium out to start and more potassium in to start, or else it's not going to work correctly. And so that's our final step. <laughs> is great, we're now repolarized, we're now more negative inside and back at rest, but we need to reset this fully so that another signal can be sent and we're back to exactly the way we were in step one. Okay, so in this resting potential phase, here's where we're using this sodium potassium pump actively. And again, it has ATP in the corner here because it's using energy to move these in a certain direction. Um, and so what's going to happen is we need to get our sodium back out. So we're going to label this arrow going out in red. And all of our sodium ions, those white ones, I'm going to highlight in red too. So the sodium potassium pump is going to pump those sodium back out so they're in their starting place. And it's going to pump that potassium back in. And now we're back to where we started. So I'll come right back to this, but if you look back up at our graph, you can see step four right here. We're back to where we started at negative 70 millivolts, all ready to go again. So I'm just gonna make two bullet points here. What is closed is the NA and K channels are closed in this step. And the NAK pump uses ATP to pump NA out and K in. And now we're back to rest. So each of these steps, as you're learning them, the key things to note is what channel's working and is it more positive in the cell or out of the cell? And so this is something that we're going to practice a lot. It's kind of like those steps of a muscle contraction. We're going to model them tomorrow and really work on learning them. Um, it's shorter than the steps of a muscle contraction, only four steps, so it will come a little bit faster. Um, and then there's also a little activity I have for you to do the rest of class to see how well um, you're understanding this as we go. Um, and so we're going to start it in class. You might finish. Um, it's probably will take 10 minutes and we have about 10 minutes. If you don't, just leave it open on your computer and you can finish it at home tonight. Um, but it's short. It's no longer than a 10 minute assignment. So um, once you're done with that, and I'll just leave this here. Um, Go ahead and pull out your Chromebook and leave this sheet out too so you can refer to it um, as you do this activity.